All right, let's look at how you balance chemical equations. One of the things that's important when looking at a chemical equation is to make sure that whatever is on the left side of the arrow is same as what's on the right side of the arrow. That doesn't mean the same chemicals on each side. It means the same number of an atom on each side. For example, this first one, there's four phosphoruses here, four phosphoruses here, so that's fine. But 10 oxygens here and two oxygens here is not fine. So we're going to say, hmm, if there are five of these, five times two is 10 oxygens, which balances 10 oxygens. This would be acceptable. And we're saying that one phosphorus molecule, which is comprised of four phosphorus atoms, reacts with five oxygen molecules, each one containing two oxygen atoms, to make a single molecule that's this. Now, uh, as we look at these other ones, we gotta follow the same principles through. One lead, one lead, one silver, one silver, a polyatomic ion can be treated as a single unit. So if you see the polyatomic ion on both sides, you can just work with that single unit. So everything is good except the nitrates. You see two nitrates, one nitrate. So if there's two nitrates here, there must be two nitrates here. And if there's two nitrates, there's also two silvers, which means you also need to ensure that there are two silvers. Now we can call this a balanced reaction. Same principle applies for all the rest of these. You just doesn't really much matter too much which one you start with, but um, see, we got three hydrogens, two hydrogens. I'm actually going to do a little trick on some of these and save the pure element for last. I could have done that here, and it would have given me the same result as what I just jumped into with the first thing. In this case, I will save the pure element for last. There's a pure element. There's a pure element. Let's save this for last. Let's look at hydrogen, not a pure element here. So, oh, I see different numbers of hydrogens. Immediately, I know I'm going to have to change that. In fact, even though this is a pure element, I see I'm going to change that too. But let's let's save that pure element for last for a sec. Because first, I need to look at the not pure element. So phosphorus is not a pure element. So two phosphoruses, one phosphorus. Let's make that two phosphoruses. That's a total of six hydrogens. We need to make this six hydrogens also. That allows it to be six hydrogens. Okay, having done that, we now have six hydrogens, six hydrogen, two phosphorus, two phosphorus, three zincs, and three zincs. We can call that a balanced equation. Same thing occurs with this next one here. See, no pure elements. Okay, so I'll just jump straight in then. One barium, three bariums. That's now six bromines. Gonna need a six there. Six hydrogens, gonna need to make that six hydrogens. Two phosphoruses, there's two phosphoruses. Okay, that works, it's all done. Now, what if you have a situation like this where the polyatomic ion is present on both sides, but there's another polyatomic ion that gets broken apart. We see there's a hydroxide here, but there's no hydroxide on the other side, so it must have turned into this. Okay, well, that turns into some extra thing to balance, and so um, that can get kind of complicated when a polyatomic ion gets broken up, so save it for last. Let's do all the other non-polyatomic ion stuff. I see two aluminums, so I'll make that two aluminums. The hydrogens, oh, that's going to be messy. Let's save the hydrogens. Okay, sulfates. Three sulfates, three sulfates. Okay, now, these oxygens must have gone here. These hydrogens must have gone here. These hydrogens must also have gone here because there's nowhere for else for them to go. So these hydroxides must combine with these hydrogens to make these waters. So anyway, let's figure this out. We've got two, three hydroxides times two more is a total of six oxygens. You're gonna need six oxygens. That's 12 hydrogens. Do we have 12 hydrogens? That's three hydroxide times two is six. Three times two is six. So it's six hydrogen here, six hydrogen here for a total of 12. Yay, it works. That is a correctly balanced formula. Now, uh, let's see. Here, we need to figure out how this reaction goes. Okay. Hmm, six carbon, six carbon. Six hydrogen, that makes six hydrogen. All right, now what about the oxygen? Let's see, uh, that's a total of how many oxygens here? Six times two is, we got 12 oxygen here, and three times that is 
three oxygen here. That's a total of 15 oxygens. Oh, how do you get 15 oxygens here then? Hmm, okay, if you want 15 oxygens, you'd have to have seven and a half of these. You'd have to say what times two is 15. You can get a calculator for that. In fact, I suppose I might as well, it occurs to me just at this moment that I might as well demonstrate that. How did I get that seven and a half? Let's say, okay, so you need 15 oxygens. Each molecule has two, so divide by how many in the molecule? That's how I got seven and a half oxygen O2s. That's what it would take to have 15 oxygens on this side and 15 oxygens on this side. Oh, you can't do that. So what do you do? You have to double everything because a one-to-one -one ratio is the same as a two-to-two -two ratio. It's, a, it's correct to say these things. So we find that you're not allowed to have a 1.5 to 2 ratio in chemistry, but you could have a 3 to 4 ratio, and that's the exact same thing. And chemistry, this is like mathematically, this is the same thing. I just times this number by 2, times this number by 2, to give a ratio with whole numbers, because remember, a chemical formula is a ratio that has to have whole numbers. Likewise, this is a ratio that has to have whole numbers. So I'm going to change this ratio of whole numbers by timesing everything by 2. If for some reason timesing by 2 doesn't make it whole numbers, I'll times it by 3. If some reason times it by 3 doesn't work, I'll times it by 4, etc. <coughs> mm. Pardon me, and I'll keep going until uh, <coughs> it gets a full number. So let's times it all by 2. So this times 2 is 2. 7.5 times 2 is 15. If you don't believe me, try it on a calculator. 7.5... 7 Oops, 0.5 times 2 is 15. This times 2 is 12. And this times 2 is 6. And if in doubt, no need to ask whether you're right or not, just count for yourself. 12 carbon, 12 carbon. 12 hydrogen, 12 hydrogen. 30 oxygens, 15 times 2. 12 times 2 would be 24 oxygens. 6 oxygens right here. 24 and 6 makes 30 oxygens. Yay, it's done. All right, this principle can be applied anywhere else. By the way, that 7.5 that was called a fractional coefficient because you also could call it 15 over 2. Um, uh, let's see, this sort of a thing. Sometimes this happens with these combustion ones. Sometimes you don't need to do this fractional coefficient thing. The only way to know is to jump in and try it out. Let's see. Um, 12 carbon, 12 carbon, 26 hydrogen, 13 times 2 is 26. How do I know that? Because I need 26 hydrogen. There's two in each molecule, so divide by how many there are per molecule, and that's how many molecules you need, 13. So 13 of these molecules right here. Let's see, that takes care of carbon, that takes care of hydrogen. Now for oxygen, I got a total of 24 oxygen. I put OX for oxygen, because if I put O for oxygen, I could be mistaken for a zero and then think it's 240. So yeah, I just put OX for oxygen. Um, and then 13 oxygen. 24 and 13 is, oh boy, 37 oxygen. So I need 37 oxygens. How do I get 37 oxygens? Oh, 37 oxygens. There's two atoms per oxygen molecules, 18 and a half oxygen molecules to give 37 oxygens. This way I got 37 oxygens here and 37 oxygens here. Don't believe me? Prove it for yourself. 18 and a half oxygen molecules at two oxygens per molecule makes a total of 37 oxygens. All right, now, you're not allowed to have numbers that aren't whole numbers in an equation. So what's the solution? Again, times it all by two. If that doesn't make a whole number, times it all by three. If not, by four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Keep going until you got whole numbers. Um, timesing it by two would work. 
times that number by two, it gets you back to 37 again. And 37 is a whole number. So let's do that. Times this by two, times this by two, times this by two. Oops, that's a four. And times this by two. And there you go. Two of these plus 37 of these makes 24 of these. I'll get this out of the way to prevent confusion. And 26 of these. All right, so um, that is essentially the examples you need to work out anything else among the things that are in here. So whenever you run into trouble with any of the things on here, even the challenge one, which isn't very challenging, um, just bear in mind the principles that work there are the exact same as the principles that work here. So there you go. That should do it.